Hello folks, in this video I'll go through how to make a simple player character in Love2D, where you can move them around the screen with the arrow keys. You don't need any prior knowledge for this tutorial, however if you are brand new to Love and you're not familiar with creating new projects or how to run them, there's a link in the description to another video of mine that helps with the setup process. The intro sections of that video are all you need. Once you're ready, I have a brand new project ready to go. It's just a folder called My Game, and inside of it is a file called main.lua. That's the foundation for any love project. And we can go ahead and run this file as is, and we will see a black screen, which is expected. Since our main.lua file has no code in it yet, the resulting game that runs is just a black window. The first thing that we should do with any game is to put in the three main functions that we use for all love projects, which is function love.load, then function love.update with dt in the parentheses, and then function love.draw. And using these three functions, we'll create our player object and add some controls to it so that it can move around. To start, let's create our player table, which will take place in love.load. We will do player equals open and close curly braces. Now keep in mind that in Lua, curly braces tend to refer to tables. So since we're doing an open and close curly brace right here, that means that player is being set to be an empty table. Next up, we'll give it some properties. So let's say player.x equals zero and player.y equals zero. These will act as the position values. The game world is like a big grid, where the x-axis goes left and right, and the y-axis goes up and down. Our player is going to start at position 0, 0, or the origin of the screen. Next, let's use the player object to draw something to the game window. All drawing takes place down in the love.draw function. So in here, let's go ahead and draw a circle that will act as the player for now. We'll say love.graphics.circle and then in the parentheses, we have four different parameters we need to provide. First is the mode. We have two options. We have fill or line. So fill, so our circle will be filled in. Then we need the x position, which is going to be player.x. Then we need the y position, player.y. And then the radius of the circle. You can make this whatever you want. I'll make mine 100. So to recap, this line right here is going to draw a circle at position 0, 0, the radius of the circle is going to be 100, and it's going to be filled in. Now if we save our file and then run, we will see that we have a cutoff circle in the upper left corner. Now the reason it's cut off is because the circle is at position 0, 0, and 0, 0 is the upper left corner of our game window right here. Let's change the position of our player to position, let's say, 400, 200. So now our X position is 400 and our Y position is 200. If we save and run now, our circle is completely in the game window and now we can see it completely. More specifically, the circle moved to the right 400 pixels over to this point right here and then down 200 pixels so that the center of the circle is at position 400, 200. Keep in mind that the higher your Y value is, the more down the screen you go. So since we said 200 here, that means we go down 200 pixels. Now that we have a player object that's being displayed on screen, we can now work on making it move. This logic is going to take place in the love.update function because love.update runs every single frame. So to start, let's do something simple. We'll do player.x equals player.x plus one. So in other words, every frame, player.x, is going to increase by 1. If we save and run, we will see that our circle is now moving slowly to the right. Specifically, it's moving one pixel every single frame. I like to call this the illusion of movement. Every frame it's updating a little bit, which makes it look like it's moving. Similarly, if we were to change this 1 to a 3, that means now we're changing the X position by three every frame. And if we save and run, it's still moving to the right, but it's moving faster now. Specifically, it's moving three pixels every frame. So that's three times as fast. 
Now our task is to do this same kind of movement, but make it correspond to the arrow keys that the player presses. You can read keyboard input very easily, and we can do this using an if statement. We'll say if love.keyboard.isdown, and then in the parentheses here, we need to specify what key we're checking for is down, and we'll start with right, or in other words, the right arrow key. Then, and we'll indent this line and put an end at the end of the if statement. So here we're asking, is the right arrow key pressed down? And if so, we're going to move the player to the right by three pixels. And this happens every single frame, so it's constantly checking for this. If we save and run now, the player isn't moving, but as soon as I press the right arrow key, he moves. And it's only going to do that when I have that arrow key pressed down. Now let's do the same thing, but for a different direction. We'll keep it easy and start with the left direction. So this time, instead of increasing by three every time, we will decrease by three, because the smaller the x value is of the player, the more to the left of the screen it will be. If we save and run now, if I hold right, he moves right, but if I hold left, the player is now moving to the left. So now we have both of the horizontal directions working. Next, let's make the player be able to move down. If we copy this section again and paste it right in here, let's check for is down the down arrow key. This time we don't want to update the player's x position because we want to move vertically. Moving vertically means we have to update the player's y position. So player.y equals player.y, and we want to move down, so that means we're going to add three. If we save and run, if I hold down, the player moves down. And finally, we have one more direction to do. If we copy this, we want to check for up. And if we want to move up, we just decrease by three. And with that, we should have all four directions, left, right, down, and up. And it's actually more than just the four directions. If I hold down two arrow keys at once, we move at a diagonal. And this is because both the X and the Y properties could be updated at the same time, which results in diagonal movement. Before we end the video, something that we can clean up is that we have plus three written on four different lines. This is generally bad practice, because if I wanted to change the player's speed, or how fast he's moving, I would have to change this three on all four of these lines, and that gets kind of annoying. It would make more sense if we created a new property for the player, Let's say player.speed, and we'll set it equal to three. Now I can take this, and instead of writing three in all these places, I can do player.speed. And now whenever I want to update the player's speed, I just have to update this value right here. Let's say I wanted to increase it to five. Now my player is moving at five pixels per frame. So if I save and run, now we are moving faster, and it's a lot easier to manage. And one final thing I want to mention is this DT, or delta time. You can use this value to make your game run and feel the same regardless of the frame rate. I'll include more information about this in another video, which I'll be sure to link here once it's ready. Just wanted to give a heads up about that, it is not at all urgent when you're just starting out. We'll be building onto this a bit more. In the next video, I'll show how to draw real sprites into the game rather than just a plain circle like this. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like if you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.